CSP, you'll see the various videos. I've got, I think, 14 of them up now. And every month I'll just add another one on a different topic. Uh, ethics uh, is going to be an issue that um, that we're going to have to take a video training session to get renewed now. So I took one through a university, but uh, I think most people are looking for something with a CEU, which you know could cost $30. Um, I always use the picture over here on the right because when in doubt, you see an ethics violation, you report it to the BCSP. That doesn't matter what it is. You never confront the person, never do anything, just send them an email. And they will respond to the person. So they have in the uh, bscp.org the code of ethics. There's eight ethics issues. And uh, they're going to talk about, you know, the first one, hold paramount the safety and health of people, protection environmental and property, and advise danger and acceptable risks. So um, if you follow me on LinkedIn, you saw a cave-in uh, accident where, you know, he was on a precast concrete slab and it collapsed. And your idea in, in uh, safety and health is to make sure people don't get hurt. So we're going to have several knowledge checks on this. Uh, since there's eight sections, I've got usually about one or two uh, per section. The BSCP Code of Ethics emphasizes which priority for safety professionals. The reputation of the safety professional, insurance rating of the company, protection of the environmental and property, protection of the environment and property, the appearance of companies. So you can just pick A, B, or C. And we pause because people who watch the video will have time to look at this. And the answer is correct. Protection of the environment and property. Which is the ethical priority of industrial hygienists? I actually had this on my test. It was something, you know, not the exact same question, but it was pretty simple. Uh, improving employee ergonomics, the health and safety of employees, ending the spread of communicable diseases, the company profitability margin. Very good, it is B. So part of the ethics is to be fair honest, impartial, act with responsibility and integrity. It's easy to say. And integrity means, uh, you know, you're a person that people trust. Uh, you value openness and honesty. You are reliable and trustworthy. You respect others. You help those in need without sacrificing your own health. And patient and flexible. Many things. So which conduct is exemplified by safety professionals misrepresenting misrepresenting lost time hours to lower the company's overhead cost. So they're going to, you know, pretend they didn't have as many injuries and uh, losing the hours, therefore making the incident rate lower. Is it compromised integrity, generally accepted behavior, professional negligence, industry standard approach? So they're trying to figure out what, comp what is the, the behavior shown. Very good. It is compromised integrity. When you're lying on the OSHA records or you're lying on the injury rates and showing people have less injuries and less time off, that would be, you know, compromising your integrity. Which is a key principle in the BCSP Code of Ethics? Impartiality, consideration, communication, objectivity. This is a tough question. I remember, I think I missed this when I took the test, so I went back and looked at it. Very good. It is impartiality. You know, I was thinking, you know, objectivity, but uh, it is a tougher question, and that's why we broke it up into the eight sections. And of course, you know, you won't get the ethics when you take the test. You'll just get the questions. And you're only going to issue public statements in an objective and truthful manner, and only when founded on knowledge and facts of the subject matter, and that you're competent to answer the questions. So typically, if you get involved in incident command, they want updates, you know, sometimes is every four hours on these disasters. So you're going to have what they call a public affairs specialist, and that, you know, public affairs person is going to be giving, you know, the briefing to the press, because you're usually going to be doing the safety out there. So if new information is discovered after making a public statement that contradicts previous knowledge, 
What is the ethical course of action? Stand by original statement to maintain credibility. Disregard the new information as it may confuse the public. Correct or update the public statement to reflect the new, accurate information. Privately acknowledge the error but avoid public rectification to prevent reputational damage. It's a tougher question. It is indeed C. You know, when they watched the uh, Foundation Food No Nitrogen case, and it originally was reported as a explosion, and it wasn't. It was just a nitrogen gas leak that knocked down s six workers and killed them. And so it wasn't an explosion at all. And the fire chief from Alganis Counties in Georgia, you know, said he cleared it up. You know, there was some information that was out that it was an explosion that was not. So that was the way to deal with it. And you're only going to take under assignments where qualified by education or experience in the specific field involved. If you're self-employed, this is a tough issue. I see this all the time. You know, if uh, work is slow and somebody asks you to teach a class, people are often going to take it because they need the money, and that is not really what you should be doing. So how should safety professionals strive to lead their company? Lead by example, provide adequate training to employees, enforcing strict discipline and policy policy adherence, exercising the authority granted to them by the company. Very good. So lead their company, lead by example. That's also, that's what they call literation, and you're going to see that in a lot of questions. So it is leading by example. You know, you should be the, the person that, you know, is ethical and, you know, leads the company with the safety efforts. What is the universal aspect of professional ethics in the safety and health environmental profession irrespective of the specific field of expertise? Okay, that's a tough question. That's, that's a, a, a badly written question. Is it management of hazardous materials, certification, individual professional competence, compliance with regulations? So what you're trying to do is show, how do you show your ethical? How would you demonstrate it? It is correct. Individual professional competence. And, uh, and that's the idea. You want to be able to do a class. You know, what I often get is people, like I said, taking a class that's beyond their head and they don't have any material for it, but, you know, they'll call me up and, hey, do you have information how to teach this class? Sometimes they do, but not a lot of times if you're getting into something, you know, very rare, like a asbestos abatement class for a week. I don't think I had material for about a couple of hours. And then you're going to represent academic and professional qualifications accurately. So there was a congressman in New York, said he had a degree from Baruch College and New York Universities, which neither one of them had him attending at all. That's falsification of records. Whether you represent... Um, you know, the fact that you were a veteran or you got a degree or you work for a company, those are would be ethical violations. Certified safety professionals should undertake the service for clients if they need the fees, it's their own bid is the lowest, they're fully technical competent, and they're carrying out services that wouldn't involve excessive time or effort. And it is C. So, number six on the Code of Ethics, you're going to conduct professional relationships by the highest standards of integrity and avoid compromise of the professional judgment with conflicts of interest. And a conflict of interest means, like, if I work for a client, I should not be in a legal case testifying against that client because I have information that would not be known by other people. So I do professional expert witness work and... I always ask them, who is the general contractor, who is the company that's getting sued, and if I've worked for them, usually I decline to work in that area. When becoming aware of professional misconduct by another holding a status within the Board of Certified Safety Professionals, take steps to bring the misconduct to the attention of the BACSP. So when you get an issue of conflict, then, you know, you need to sit there and bring it up to them. They don't want you to confront it because you don't work for them. They want you to just send an email and go through it. Okay.
Okay, another one is, what is an example of plagiarism? It's reading a paragraph online and retyping it in your own words. Copying and pasting someone else's work into your own paper using quotation marks and citing the author. Typing a paper in your own word. Copy and pasting a sentence from the internet into your paper. Plagiarism is very controversial for a lot of people writing formal papers and stuff. So what you're doing is wrong. Um, oh, that's not correct. It is D. The answer is D. I will fix this in there. Copying and pasting a sentence is plagiarism into your paper. If you use quotation marks to cite the author, that's correct. So the answer is D. I don't know why it says B. Okay. This is common for people with recertification. I just got done with the CEUs on the uh, CSP, and then I just submitted the CIT certification, which is a different set of documents. And then uh, you have to make sure you have so many CEUs of training to get certified. If you're short point two CEUs, which is two hours of safety training, what should you do? Round up the CEUs, write BCSP and ask for an extension, add 0.4 CEUs and make it up later, write BCP and ask for an exemption. You write them and ask for an extension. And usually they're pretty you know, willing to do it. Uh, there's a lot of online classes that give CEUs, so that's not usually a problem. Uh, you can take NFPA or ASSP classes for CEUs and easily meet that. Comus says he has a CSP as a consultant. It's listed on his business card. You check the BCSP website, and he does not have any BCSP credentials. What's the best way to proceed? Report him to the BCSP, confront him quietly in the hallway, and ask him to explain. Ask in a meeting about his CSP designation, send an email to your management teams questioning his credentials. I think we all know that one right now, period. You know, when we had the Facebook uh, BCSP study group, there are several scammers that say, oh, I just passed the CSP and I'll give you the notes privately. And I go to the credential directory and see it's not there. So I don't need to report them because they're, they're probably not even real people with the names, you know. They just doesn't match up. Then you're going to act in a manner free of bias, discrimination, and harassment. Uh, I can see eventually, uh, like in the state of Illinois where I live, we have to take in business a 30-minute um, discrimination, sexual harassment class, you know, preventing uh, that every year. That's required for all employers, generally over 10 people. Which scenario would in indicate discrimination or bias? The safety professional firing an employee of minority status due to repeated and deliberate life endangering behaviors. A safety professional supports a diversity inclusion program. A safety professional requires additional training specifically for those employees with developmental learning disabilities. Safety professional ensuring training accessibilities for all employees in the English language only. That's a tough worded question. That, that one is, I mean, I, I think when I had that one, I had to go back and I have to look at it because this one you have to read twice almost. If you make it only available in English language and you have Spanish, Polish, Arabic, Indian, Hindu, then that's not going to be fair to everybody else because they're not going to learn. OSHA here requires training in the language that the people normally would speak if, to be effective training. So. When you make it just but one. John, in this one, why? Uh, John, in this one, why can't we select the A option? Because he's giving. Because he has a reason. Reason for discharge. If you fire him because you just don't like the person, that would be an example of discrimination. But for repeated and deliberate life changing behavior, you usually have a discipline program of verbal, uh, written, time off, and firing, and that would be. That's not showing discrimination or bias. It's just following your program. So A would, would not be it. Okay. okay. Right. What should a multinational corporation do to adopt and manage a very variety of statutory laws that they're subject to? Because Mexico has different rules than Europe, than the United States, than Canada, India, Saudi Arabia. Campaign for uniform laws across all countries of operation standardized operation according to the most lenient national law, 
align all operations with the most stringent law from the home country of the headquarters, comply with the laws specific to each company, country where they have establishments. There's actually a better answer, but I know what they're looking for. D. D. It is D. Uh, what most companies do, and I, I work with ExxonMobil and um, a couple of steel companies that are international and Mitsubishi, they comply with the most stringent law of all the countries. You know, if hexavalent chromium is 25 micrograms per cubic meter for level, that's what they're going to choose worldwide. If, uh, you know, uh, benzene is one part per million, that's what they're going to use nationwide and worldwide. They don't make two different standards for the United States and another country. They just try to follow the, the strictest guidelines accepted worldwide. What's the primary goal of using blind qualifications in initial screening of job documents? Most times you'll see computers will be the blind qualification screening. You know, the computer will screen out the top applicants based on keywords. The goal is to prioritize the applicants with specific connections, to assess the candidate's appearance and physical attributes, to minimize bias and focus on qualifications and skills, to expedite the hiring process by skipping resume reviews. Another tough question. It is C, to minimize bias and focus. Then when you get a list of 10 candidates, they're technically all qualified because the computer or whatever screen is, is made it uh, done. A lot of people are using the computer to screen out this uh, set of applicants because sometimes when you apply for it, there's, there's 500 to 1,000 people applying. And then you want to seek opportunities to be constructive service in civic affairs and work for the advancement of safety and health and well-being of the community and share the professions by sharing their knowledge and skills. So, you know, one of the things, if you're in ASSP, there's chapters all across the world. I'm in the Three Rivers chapter, which is in Illinois, and we meet once a month on a Friday. What's an appropriate way for a safety professional to advance their profession within the community? Refrain from discussing outside of the professional circles, participate in local government meetings to advocate for safety regulations, only offer safety advice when compensated for their expertise. Focus exclusively on global issues rather than community concerns. Tough question also. B. Very good. It's B. And I saw a good example with um, uh, BP up in Indiana where they had a hydrogen sulfide uh, smell and they had community meetings with the residents to tell them what was happening and uh, my impression was the community is very happy they explained there's an odor threshold for it way below the levels of being unsafe uh, we monitor constantly here's the results that we had and uh, you know we we're trying to make it zero emissions but sometimes when uh, there's some off gassing uh, as things digest in the chemical plant then you might have a whiff of it and we have alarms for it and we, we're watching for the community. You know, there's OSHA limits and EPA limits. Regarding the Board of Certified Safety Professionals Code of Ethics, which statement is accurate? Adherence to the code is required for individuals who receive certification from BCSP. Only government agency employees in the safety field are required to follow the code. The code must be followed by individuals certified by the BCSP. Every professional with safety degree must observe the BCSP Code of Ethics. This is, this, is a, this is a bad question. I'm going to tell you that because, you know, sometimes when you get these questions on the test, there's a practice exam. There's 25 practice questions. I think this is one of them. But I just brought it out there. The code must be followed by individuals certified by BSCP. Um, it's very similar to A. In fact, I would argue that A and C are both the same question. But this gives you an example where there are going to be 25 questions on your typical 200 question exam that are practice. They're trying to look at what the, the way they wrote it, look at the pass rates on it, and then eventually decide to keep it. This is a case where you would see a lot of people pick A and C, and then because they're probably equally picked, you would say, well, we have to rewrite the question or make one of them more, you know, uh, an example where it's not accurate. So, again, this is a you know tough question. Top ethical behaviors: uh, sexual harassment, lying on reports, 
a lot of conflicts and in interests sometimes. Uh, it's a conflict of interest to you know own a, a consulting company and then you know work full time for them and then hire your consultants, you know, to help you out. You know, that's kind of like you know you're making money on the company by hiring people that you know personally and and uh, that's not an issue. But if you know you're benefiting from that, then there is an issue. And of course, theft and lying and discrimination and drugs and alcohol abuse would be an issue. Um, not keeping the records correctly, environmenting environmental laws and uh, gifts and entertainment. That's, uh, you know, sometimes what we run into is, you know, you're getting uh, uh, particularly involved in a legal case and they're, they're paying you, you know, to tell you what to do for a testimony. That would not be good. Any questions? Okay. And uh, again, ethics is going to be very easy for a lot of the questions, but there might be a tough one like you've seen in a couple examples here. Otherwise, next month we'll do another session. I appreciate you all coming in today, and uh, we'll uh, see you uh, yes, next I'm month. John? Yes, sir. Um, yes, John. Any uh, any upcoming changes uh, going to happen in BCS, like in, for CSP exam? Not CSP. The SMS got changed for a slight uh, readjustment of some of the, the the topics. They added a couple new topics in the uh, what they call the uh, blueprint. But I haven't seen anything proposed. It is due because it usually goes every four years and should have had some changes last year. So I figure this year is going to probably be a change if it's sticking with a four-year cycle. And that would be the ASP, CSP, and CHST. Okay. okay. And then we'll look at uh, adding lectures of workplace violence. That could be the next one, too. I know people want physics, too. So we'll look at probably workplace violence because everybody's getting questions on that. All right. Thank you very much.